everyone, welcome back to my channel. Nice to see you again. And for today's video, we'll talk about topic 3, where in this topic, we'll focus on alkin, your carbon-carbon double bond. In this topic, we will have a few learning outcomes that you need to cover. The first one, what is actually alkin? The second is the nomenclature of alkin, the naming of alkin. You have your preparation of alkin. We have the reaction of alkene. Last but not least, we have the unsaturation test of alkene that you have learned in your lab. So let's start with your 3.1 where is the introduction of alkene. We are mainly asking for what is actually alkene. So what is actually alkene that you know? Alkene, the first and foremost, you must have at least one carbon-carbon double bond. So in your structure, you must have at least one carbon-carbon double bond. That is your alkene. So in detail, what is actually the carbon-carbon double bond? The carbon double bond is actually one sigma bond and one pi bond. So that is one of your sigma, that is one of your pi. That is your carbon-carbon double bond. For your carbon-carbon single bond, that is your sigma bond. So in your double bond, you have the presence of pi bond. The carbon in your carbon-carbon double bond, this two carbon, will be holding a hybridization sp2. The carbon is a sp2 hybridized carbon. And this sp2 hybridized carbon will give rise to a trigonal planar shape and a bond angle of 120. If you look at it, you can see the trigonal shape. And you see the trigonal shape that you learned in your semester one. That is your trigonal shape. And this trigonal shape will give you a bond angle of 120 degree. And this is how a carbon-carbon double bond should look like with a hybridization of sp2 that gives rise to a trigonal planar shape with a bond angle of 120. Next, what would be the general formula of alkene? The general formula of straight chain alkenes will be CnH2n. So for example, C5H10. When you have a C5H10, you will have a structure something like this. You have your 5 carbon with a double bond and then you should have a 10 hydrogen. Let's check whether it's true or not that you have your 10 hydrogen. 5 and 10 hydrogen. So that is your C5H10, the general formula of your straight chain alkenes. Next, you have your cyclic alkenes over here, your CnH2n minus 2. So let's see, if you're having a C5 cyclic, you will only have H8 hydrogen. Let's check. If it's a C5 cyclic, then you have a 5-carbon cyclic with a double bond. And we know that carbon can only hold 4 bonds. So, this carbon that holding the double bond will be only holding one more hydrogen over here. And then this carbon, the rest of the carbon that holding single bond, will have another 2 hydrogen. And if you look at the total of hydrogen that you have in this cyclic, will be 8 hydrogen. That's why you have your C5H8, which is your CnH2n minus 2. In the other words, in your cyclic alkenes, you will minus 2 more hydrogen from the straight chain. Okay? So it gives rise to your CnH2n in your straight chain and CnH2n minus 2 in your cyclic alkenes. Next, we will look at why alkene is a lot more reactive than the alkene. By that in mind, alkene means you have the presence of carbon-carbon double bond. And in the presence of carbon-carbon double bond, you have the sigma bond and also the pi bond. And for your information, the pi bond is much weaker than the sigma bond. Compared to your carbon-carbon single bond, you only have a sigma, right? Therefore, your double bond will be weaker than your single bond because this pi bond is much easier to break. When the double bond is much easier to break because of the pi is weaker, 
Therefore, alkene will be able to undergo more type of reaction compared to your alkene. Since your alkene, your carbon-carbon single bond, is already saturated, therefore, it can only undergo substitution. But in your alkene, guys, your alkene can undergo a lot more type of reaction. For example, it can do addition. For example, it can do oxidation. So you can do more things to your carbon-carbon double bond alkene because it's more reactive. Next, let's look at topic 3.2 where we'll talk about nomenclature of alkene. And in this nomenclature, we will cover a few things. We'll look at the name of the straight chain alkenes. We'll look at the branch alkenes. We'll also look at the cyclic alkenes. Not to forget is your nomenclature will definitely depends on your IUPAC system. So the IUPAC system that you learned previously in your alkene will be applied 100% in your alkene. There will be only slight changes, okay? So let's look at the name of the straight chain alkenes. Looking at the name of your straight chain alkenes, the first thing that I want to insist over here is the spelling of your name. The spelling of your name will be changing your A and E of alkene to E and E in the alkene. And you realize that in your carbon-carbon double bond alkene, your name start with itin. Why? Because carbon-carbon double bond must be holding at least two carbon so that you can have a carbon-carbon double bond. That's why in your alkene, you must always start with 2-carbon ethene. Next, let's look at the molecular formula. Since it's a straight chain alkene, that's why the formula will be CnH2n. And if you look at the formula, you have your C2H4, C3H6, C4H8. So you can see over here, all that is your CnH2n molecular formula. And the structure is exactly as what is given. Just want to remind you something on the structure is the number of hydrogen on the carbon that holding double bond. All right, if you look at the carbon that holding the double bond, the number of hydrogen will decrease. So be careful because at the end of the day, carbon can only hold four bond maximum. So make sure you count the hydrogen very, very carefully. Since the carbon is already holding a double bond, the number of hydrogen will also decrease by one. So make sure you check the number of hydrogen. Next, let's look at the IUPAC for the cyclic alkenes. So your cyclic alkenes, same thing. The name will be only changing from A and E to E and E in your naming. And as always, if it's a cyclic alkene, then the name will be only having cyclo in front. Starting with a cyclopropene 3 carbon, you can see the presence of double bond in your 3 carbon ring. The presence of double bond in your 4 carbon ring. And that is your double bond in the 5 carbon ring, double bond in the 6 carbon ring. Looking at your molecular formula, if you remember, it's a CnH2n minus 2. So you have your C3H4 because 6 minus 2 over here, okay? So you have your C3H4. Let's check whether it's true or not that it's a C3H4. This carbon that holding single bond will be having two hydrogen to make it complete. The carbon that holding double bond will be only holding one more hydrogen in the cyclic. So you can see that you have your C4. So this is the general formula of cyclic alkene. Whenever your cyclo having a carbon-carbon double bond, this is the general formula. Again and again to remind you is the carbon that holding double bond will be only having one hydrogen over here in the cyclic. The main reason is because one carbon can only hold four bond. So you have your one, two, three, four bond. All right, that is your four bond. So be careful with the number of hydrogen that you put into your carbon-carbon double bond. At the end of the day, the basic is still one carbon, four bonds. Simple, easy. Next, let's go into the IUPAC nomenclature rules of alkene. It's quite simple. 
because the longest carbon right now must come with the C double bond C in it. You must have your carbon-carbon double bond in your parent chain, in the other words. And your carbon-carbon double bond must have the lowest number given. So let's look at the example that I have over here. This is my structure. So my longest carbon is 1, 2, moving to the double bond, 3 carbon, 4 carbon, and that is my longest carbon. All right? So my longest carbon right now is 5 carbon. That's why this guy will become pentene. And slightly different from your alkene is your carbon-carbon double bond right now must have number. And the number must be the lowest number that you can give. So over here, when you want to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, where do I start? From the left or from the top right? It's easier right now because we are not looking at the substituent. We are looking at your carbon-carbon double bond. Your carbon-carbon double bond must deserve the lowest number. If I'm counting from the left, I will have 1, 2. Number 2 is already holding your double bond. 3, 4, 5. But if I'm counting from the top right, I will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So counting from the left, I'll be taking number 2. Counting from the top right, I'll be taking number 3 for the double bond. Which one is lower? Number 2 is lower. So your pentene right now, your parent name will be slightly different. It will become 2-pentene. Alright? Your parent right now deserves to have a number because we want to know where is the double bond. Let's try another one. So over here, let's find the longest carbon with the C double bond C in it. So I have my longest carbon, carbon number 1, carbon number 2, 3, having double bond. That is my longest carbon. Alright, so how many carbon is that? That is 7 carbon. So this guy will be called as heptene. Look at the spelling. Okay, so where should I start counting from to ensure that my carbon-carbon double bond have the lowest possible number? So let's try to count from the left bottom. 1, 2, 3. So number 3, I already see my double bond. So 3 over here. 4, 5, 6, 7. How about counting from the top? So you have 1, 2, 3, 4. Number 4 only, you come across your double bond. 5, 6, 7. So blue color or purple color? Obviously, the lower one is the blue color. So blue color is the one that we will be taking. So your name for this parent should be 3 heptin because you are taking the blue color. So there is two things over here. The longest carbon must have the carbon-carbon double bond in it and the carbon-carbon double bond must have the lowest number. So let's try more example. So where is my longest carbon chain? I have carbon 1, 2 over here, moving 3, 4. So I have a substituent right now. That is my longest carbon. Can you see your longest carbon? Okay. So my longest carbon is a 5 carbon. That's why this guy is a pentene. So the numbering is no longer looking at your substituent. We don't care what is your substituent located at this moment. We only care where is your double bond. Bear that in mind, your double bond must have the lowest number. So I should count from the bottom right or the left. Obviously, we are count from the left because if you are counting from the left, you will have number 2 for your double bond. So number 2 for your double bond is the lowest at this moment because if I'm counting from the bottom right, I will have number 3. So we don't want the number 3 because number 2 is lower than number 3. That's why your pentene over here will be 2 pentene where we'll be counting from the left. That is your 1, that is your 2. And you can see your double bond is at carbon number 2. So your parent right now is your pentene. We only look for the parent name at this moment. All right, we only look for the parent names at this moment. All right, let's look at another example. So over here, this is my structure. I have my carbon-carbon double bond over here. 
knowing that my carbon carbon double bond must be in the parent so we can highlight that first because your longest carbon definitely having it so look at it you know that your longest carbon will be moving all the way from here from the top going down to your double bond going down to the bottom so you have your longest carbon over here so how many carbon is that it's a seven carbon one two three four five six seven so your seven carbon over here the name will be heptin so seven carbon where should you count from bear that in mind carbon carbon double bond again must have the lowest number so looking at it, I should be counting from the top or I should be counting from the bottom. Counting from the top, you will have one, two, three, four. All right. But counting from the bottom, you will have one, two, three, and you see the double bond. So obviously, we'll be counting from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Easy. So it's even easier than your alkane because you have the indication of your double bond. So it's pretty simple over here. Make sure your double bond is in the longest carbon chain, is in the parent, and also your double bond must deserve to have the lowest number first, rather than the substituent. Next, let's look at the position of your substituent. We need to number the position of substituent. As always, between number and words, we use dash between number and number we use comma you should remember that so how should i indicate the position of substituent it's pretty simple because it will depends on your carbon carbon double bond number okay what i mean by here is you have this structure we still identify the parent first and your parent over here is going down because you have more carbon over there okay so that is your parent and your parent name right now is pantene 5 carbon okay so pantene 5 carbon is you should be calculating from the left or from the right you must calculate in the direction where your double bond get the lowest number so i will be start calculating from the left one two three four five so when you have the number already then you can indicate your substituent. So your double bond right now holding number two is the lowest number that we can give. So your substituent right now is located at carbon number three. Therefore, it becomes three methyl. Don't forget your pantene right now is two. So you have your two pantene. And the full name for this compound will be three methyl dash two dash pantene. And that is how we get the name of your carbon-carbon double bond. Just a very, very kind reminder, the double bond deserves a position. So simple, that is how we do it. Next, let's look at the other rules. Same substituent will be using prefixes. As always, you'll be using your di if you have two substituent repeated. Your tri for three substituent repeated. Tetra for four substituent repeated. Let's look at our example today. So my carbon-carbon double bond again must be in the longest carbon chain. So your longest carbon chain obviously moving from the top over here, moving down to the bottom. And that is your longest carbon chain. How many carbon is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is your heptin, seven carbon. And you should be calculating from the top or the bottom. From the top is one, two, three, four. From the bottom is one, two, three, and you reach the double bond. So obviously we'll be counting from the bottom. One, two, three, heptin, four, five, six, seven. So your parent name will be three heptin. Next, we are going to identify your substituent. You have your substituent over here, methyl group. And you have the same number as your parent because it's located on the third carbon. So you have your three methyl. Over here, you have another methyl group where it's located at the carbon number four. So you have your four methyl. So when you combine the four methyl and the three methyl, it's a two repetition. 
So we are using the die. You will have three comma four dash die methyl three heptin, and that is your complete naming. So can you see that the slightly different in your alkene is your alkene carbon carbon double bond must have a position number for the carbon carbon double bond, and that is the only difference to be honest. The rest of the thing are the same. Next, if you have the same longest carbon chain with the carbon carbon double bond in it, we are going to choose the one with more substituent as always. So I have an example over here. I have my carbon carbon double bond. So my longest carbon that is a two way that we can have the longest carbon. The first one I can move from the top, going down, to the bottom. That is my first one. You have one, two, three, four, five carbon. My second one is moving straight. That is my second one. So which one give you more substituent? If you are looking at the yellow, yellow give you one substituent, two substituent, three substituent. Those that are not in the highlighted yellow. So we have three substituent for the yellow. How about the green? If you are having the green one, you're having one substituent and two substituent isopropyl. So two substituent and three substituent. Which one is the one that we are going to choose? We definitely choose the one with more substituent. That's why we will be choosing the yellow parent. All right, we will be choosing the yellow color parent because it gives rise to more substituent. Remember that. So your parent name over here is a five carbon one two three four five. So you have your present of pentene again. Identify your substituent. You have the present of your ethyl group. You have the present of your methyl group. Indicate the position of the double bond first. All right. Don't depends on the substituent. Depends on the double bond. So the double bond must have the lowest number again. So I should be counting from the bottom, or we should be counting from the top. So let's see. Counting from the top, the double bond will be holding one, two, three. If you are counting from the top, you'll be holding number three. Then only you have your double bond. But if you are counting from the bottom, one, two, already holding the double bond. So we definitely count from the bottom. You will have one. Two, three, four, five. But since we are counting from the bottom, so your carbon double bond is at carbon number two. Your pentene is at number two. Your methyl group over here will be at number four. Your methyl group over here will be at number two, the same as your double bond. Over here, your ethyl group is number three. So what would be the full name of this compound? You have your dimethyl over here. You will have your two four. Combine them to become your dimethyl group. So having a dimethyl and also an ethyl, which one comes first? Bear that in mind. We will ignore the alphabet D and we will only take count the alphabet M over here for methyl group. And the ethyl will take count of the E. So M and E, which alphabet comes first? When you write your name, it will be alphabetically ordered. So alphabetically ordered means you will have your three ethyl, two, four, dimethyl, two, pentene. So bear that in mind. The alphabet that we take count is E over here and also M, and we will ignore the di. I hope that you remember the prefixes alphabet. Of di, tri, tetra will be ignored. So over here we will ignore the D and take count of the M. And alphabetically order comes first. So E comes first before M. And make sure your parent having the position of your double bond. And that is the complete name. So next, let's look at another example. I have a big structure over here. How do I identify the longest parent? It's pretty simple because we know that your carbon-carbon double bond must be in the parent chain. So what will I do is I will highlight where is my double bond first. 
And then from the carbon that holding double bond, we will choose the correct direction for this carbon. Moving to the left, we only have one carbon. But moving to the bottom, you have more carbon. So we will decide to move to the bottom. When you move to the bottom already, there is a split way. Moving to the left, one carbon. Moving to the right, two carbon. So always go for the longest carbon. All right. And then for this carbon, you can move to the top or you can move to the right. Moving to the top, you have two carbon only. Moving to the right, guys, you have three carbon. So we always go for the longest carbon. And that is how we get the longest carbon chain with the double bond in the longest carbon chain. Name your longest carbon chain over here. Your longest carbon chain holding 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 carbon and that is your octane. So where should you count from? You count from the bottom or you count from the top? So let's see. If I'm counting from the bottom, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4. So carbon number 4, then we will see the double bond. And then you have your 5. You have your 6, you have your 7, you have your 8. So carbon number 4 if I'm counting from the bottom. And if I'm counting from the top, you will have 1, 2, 3, 4. You will be also having number 4. 5, 6, 7, 8. So counting from the bottom will give you carbon, carbon double bond at carbon number 4. Counting from the top will also give you carbon, carbon double bond at carbon number 4. In the other words, octane definitely is a 4 octane. But taking the green color 4 or the blue color 4. So if both direction give you the same position to the carbon-carbon double bond, we will choose the one where substituent has the lowest number. So if the double bond holding the same number, moving from the left or the right, the double bond still holding the same number, we will choose the one that substituent having the lowest number. Let's look at your green color first. Your green color, your substituent will start at carbon number three. Can you see that? Your substituent start at carbon number three over here. But the blue color, your substituent start at carbon number two. One, two, and you see a substituent. So, number three having a metal group, number two having a metal group. Of course, we are taking the number two. So, we will be choosing the blue color over here. And next, what do we do is identify your substituent as always. That is your methyl group. That is your isopropyl, if you remember. And that is your methyl group. That is your methyl group. And as always, guys, we give number. So this methyl group is at carbon number 2. This isopropyl is at carbon number 4. This methyl group is at carbon number 5. And then you have another methyl group at carbon number 6. So your complete name will be 4 isopropyl. 2, 5, 6, trimethyl, 4, octane. And that should be the complete name. And the alphabetically order that we take count in your isopropyl is your I, and in your trimethyl is your M. So the I must come first before the M. That's why you have 4 isopropyl, 2, 5, 6, trimethyl, 4 octane. Simple, easy. Next, what happens if your double bond is at carbon number 1? What would be the name? Let's see. So as always, we will highlight the double bond first so that you can identify the longest carbon. So from here, that is already your last carbon. Moving up, so we will see which one gives you more carbon. All right, we will always move to the direction that gives you more carbon. Move to the top, you only have one. Moving to the right, you have two more, so choose the right-hand side. Move to the right, and you have your longest carbon. And your longest carbon, guys, over here is a 5 carbon, so that is your pentene. 
And what happens when your carbon-carbon double bond is at carbon number 1? We know that the double bond must deserve to have the lowest number. So straight away, this guy definitely be carbon number 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So your methyl group over here will be your 3 methyl. And for your pentene, do we need to put 1 pentene? No. Whenever it's at carbon number 1, your double bond is not needed to hold the number 1. So when I write the name is 3 methyl pentene without a number in front. When I don't have a number in front from my pentene, straight away we know that it's actually one pentene. Alright, we know that the double bond must be located at carbon number one. Okay, but in the naming, it's not needed to put the number one. You can let go the number one, but it's something common sense that you know. When they don't give you number like this, alright, when they don't give you number, it's automatically at carbon number one. Make sense? Simple. Next, let's look at the cyclic naming. What happens when your carbon-carbon double bond is in the cyclic? Even easier, because they must hold carbon number one and number two. Your carbon-carbon double bond in the cyclic must be holding one and two. For example, I have over here. So over here, this carbon-carbon double bond must be holding one, two. And this guy will be called as cyclohexene only. It's not needed to put number in the front because there will be forever holding one and two. Same thing over here. This guy will be your one, two. So we will only call it as cyclobutene. It's not needed to put the number. It's definitely one and two, definitely. And that, one, two. So that is your cyclopentene. So the naming in the cyclic is even easier because the carbon-carbon double bond must be holding 1 and 2. Simple. When you already have the carbon-carbon double bond in the cyclic holding 1 and 2, then you are going to move to the direction where the substituent will also have the possible lowest number. So you can choose whether it's a clockwise 1 and 2 or the anti-clockwise 1 and 2. Let's look at example. So I have my structure over here. My parent is my cyclopentene 5 carbon. I can hold 1, 2 like this. If I'm holding 1, 2, this will be 3, 4, 5. Or I can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Look at the numbering, guys. Your substituent over here can be number 5 or can be number 3. So 3 and 5, which one is lower? We want to have your substituent also have the possible lowest number. Since over here, you can see that it will be forever 1 and 2, 1 and 2. So your double bond is already holding 1 and 2. That is the correct one, the requirement. Moving to the top or moving to the bottom? We will choose the one moving to the bottom because that will give rise to your substituent lower number. So we will choose the red color direction. When you are moving to the bottom, you have one, two on the double bond and three for your substituent. So you have your three ethyl group. And the complete name for this will be your three ethyl cyclopentene. Simple. Easy? Very easy. Alright, let's look at another example. I have this example right now. As always, I have my double bond over here. Okay, and we know that our double bond must be holding 1 and 2. So even easier, when your double bond in the cyclic holding a substituent, the double bond must be at number 1. So this will definitely be number 1, moving to the top to get the number 2. That is your 3, 4, 5, 6. Why is that like that? Because your substituent also deserves to have the lowest number. So the carbon double bond that holding the substituent straight away be the number 1. Automatically be the number 1. So that your methyl group over here can have the lowest number 1.
So my parent over here is my cyclohexin. My substituent is my 1-methyl. My substituent over here is my 3-methyl. My substituent over here is my 5-ethyl. So the complete name of this structure will be 5-ethyl. Your alphabetically order E come first, followed by 1,3-dimethyl cyclohexin. And that is the complete name. Simple, easy. Any problem with that? The only rules is the carbon-carbon double bond in the cyclic must have number 1 and number 2. Then you will choose to move to the direction where the substituent also will have the lowest number. That's it in the cyclic. Next, we have cis trans isomer. Let's look at what is actually cis trans isomer. Cis trans isomer, there is some requirement. It must be in trigonal planar shape where the bond angle is 120. The example of the cis isomer that I can give to you over here is like this. Look at the trigonal planar shape. Can you look at the trigonal planar shape? That is your trigonal planar shape. All right. The triangle over here. Okay. So you can see the 120 bond angle, 120 bond angle over here. That is all your 120 bond angle. And how do I identify that is a cis isomer? Cis isomer means the hydrogen must be on the same side. The hydrogen is on the same side. Can you see? Hydrogen is at the top over here. That is what I mean by the same side. How about the trans isomer? If the cis isomer is at the top together, trans isomer means that your hydrogen must be at the opposite side. That is your trans. Okay? So cis isomer, hydrogen must be on the same side. Okay? Trans isomer, hydrogen must be at the opposite side. That is how we identify cis isomer and trans isomer. So simple, cis isomer, hydrogen on the same side, trans isomer, hydrogen on the opposite side. Easy. With one condition, they must be in the trigonal planar shape. You must draw them in the shape of trigonal planar so that you can see whether they are at the top or they are at the bottom. You must draw them in the trigonal planar shape, okay? For the cis isomer, you must use the prefixes cis in front of the name. For the trans isomer, you must use the prefix trans in front of the name. For example, I have my cis isomer over here look something like this. Let's try to give name of this structure. So, I must have the double bond in the parent. Moving down, because I want to have the longest carbon. For this one, moving down, again, I want to have the longest carbon. Okay, so I know that my parent name right now is pantene. That is my parent. My substituent over here is my methyl group. And the numbering, as what we have learned just now, double bond must have the lowest number. Double bond should have the lowest number first, not the substituent. So, to make sure that my double bond have the lowest number, I will start counting from this side. 1, 2. I have number 2 over here. 3, 4, 5. So, my pantene is a 2 pantene. My methyl group is a 4 methyl. And the complete name for this structure is 4 methyl 2 pantene. But this, unfortunately, is not the complete name yet. The complete name must have the cis in front because it's a cis isomer where you can see that the hydrogen is on the same side. Therefore, the complete name of this will be cis 4 methyl 2 pantene. All right? So it must be cis. When the structure gives you in the shape of trigonal planar, where you can identify whether it's a cis or trans isomer, then you must have the cis in front of the name. Okay? Next, let's look at my trans isomer. It's the same structure. Alright, so you have your double bond over here. Only the arrangement is different, but if you name it, the name will still be the same. 
only different is you will have a trans in front. Let's see. So over here, I have a substituent, methyl group. Same thing, I want my double bond to have the lowest number. So my double bond will be one, two, lowest number two over here. You have your three, you have your four methyl, five as the last carbon. So my double bond will be a two, therefore my parent will be a two pentene, guys. And my substituent will be a four methyl. So what would be the full name? The full name is not only four methyl, two pentane. Because you can see that it's a trans isomer holding the hydrogen at the opposite direction. Since it's a trans isomer, your complete name should be trans 4 methyl 2 pentene. And that is how we look at the cis and trans isomer. Okay? Just a kind reminder your cis and trans isomer must be in the shape of trigonal planar so that you can see your hydrogen is at the opposite direction or the same direction. You must have them in the shape of trigonal planar. Okay, next, let's name and draw the cis trans isomer. First and foremost, let's name this thing. If you cannot name it by looking at it like this, you can expand the structure. You have your Cl, you have your CH, double bond CH, and then you have your CH3. So as always, we start highlighting the double bond because the double bond must be the parent. Your double bond right now is on the first carbon. So on the right hand side, you move straight away. That is my parent. So my parent over here is a propene, guys. Propene carbon number one. So one, two, three. Your propene is not needed to put the one propene. Okay, make sure, yeah, because it's at number one, you can let go the number. So you have a substituent chloro over here that located at carbon number one. So you have one chloro. If you draw it in the form of straight chain like this, then the name will be as simple as one chloro propene. That is the name. If you have it in the form of straight chain. But what happened if the question asks for cis isomer? then you must draw this thing in the cis isomer form. In the other words, you must have your carbon-carbon double bond in the shape of your trigonal planar. Okay, first thing. Next, we will focus only at your carbon-carbon double bond at this moment. So your carbon-carbon double bond holding hydrogen-hydrogen. And since it's a cis isomer, your hydrogen must be on the same side, top, top, all right? So these two hydrogen settle. It's on the same side right now to provide you the cis isomer. Next, we look at the carbon holding what? The carbon on the left is holding a Cl. So the carbon on the left is holding a Cl. The carbon on the right is holding another CH3. So you have another CH3. And that is how your cis isomer look like. And the name of this cis isomer will be cis 1 chloro propene. Or since it's at number 1, it can be cis chloro propene because it's only at number 1 and there is only one substituent. Can you see the difference? When do you need to have the word cis? Is when you can see the cis isomer, when you have it in the form of trigonal planar. And over here, the name is only one chloropropene because it's a normal straight chain. See that? Next, let's look at our trans isomer. How do I draw my trans isomer? Simple. Still start with your C double bond C, holding the shape of trigonal planar. All right, your, like your fish bone, basically. And then trans isomer means that your hydrogen must be at the opposite direction. Hydrogen at the top, hydrogen at the bottom. So your Cl remain unchanged over here. Can you see that your Cl remain unchanged? And then you have your CH3 moving to the top. You are basically switching the hydrogen and the CH3 on the right-hand side. 
then you can see that it will be a trans where your hydrogen right now is at the opposite direction. So that is your trans isomer. And the name will be trans chloropropene. Okay. And a kind reminder, I don't know whether you realize or not, a kind reminder, you will have your cis and the one is a dash. Whenever after the cis or the trans, there is a dash. All right, whether it's an alphabet or number, after the word cis, always a dash. After the word trans, always the dash. Okay, so you have your cis one chloropropene and your trans chloropropene. So you can have your cis chloropropene or your trans chloropropene over here. Simple. Let's try another example. My advice is we are going to expand it, but we are going to expand only at the carbon carbon double bond. Okay, so let's try expanding this. I have my carbon holding double bond, holding hydrogen, holding CH3. Only expand your double bond. And then same thing over here, you have your hydrogen and then you have your CH, CH2. Going down, you have your CH3. Over here, you have your CH3. We do not need to expand everything, guys. We only expand your carbon-carbon double bond. And then find the longest carbon where your double bond must be in the longest carbon to get the name. So you have your C double bond over here, not the first carbon. So you have another carbon on the left. Moving to your right, okay, you have one carbon. Going to the top, you have one carbon. But going to the right, you have another two carbon. So we shall go to the right to get the longest carbon. And my longest carbon over here, guys, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have a six carbon. Six carbon over here means hexene. And hexene, where your double bond located at which carbon? Counting from the left or counting from the right? counting from the left because we want to make sure your double bond is holding the lowest number. So your parent name over here will be 2-hexene and your substituent CH3 will be 4-methyl. See that? Easy. Just expand the structure. Okay. So the name of this structure will be 4-methyl 2 Hexene. Let's try to draw for the cis isomer. So by that in mind, in the cis isomer, you must have your carbon double bond in the shape trigonal planar. Must be in the shape trigonal planar. That is your cis isomer. So in the cis isomer, don't look at everything. We only focus on the carbon double bond. Focus on this. All right. Focus only on your carbon double bond. So look at your carbon double bond, your carbon double bond holding one hydrogen, one hydrogen. So put down the hydrogen since it's a cis, so your hydrogen must be on the same side. That is your hydrogen settle. On the carbon that holding the double bond, on the left carbon that holding the double bond, this guy holding another CH3. So bring the CH3 over, you have your CH3. Okay. On the left hand side, you have this big group. So you basically copy the big group. The carbon, this bond, holding what? Holding CH, holding CH3, holding CH2, holding CH3. So guys, you basically copy this entire group of carbon into the correct position. Just copy that. And you realize that it's a cis isomer because you have your carbon in the shape of trigonal planar and the hydrogen is located on the same side. You can see your hydrogen is on the same side right now. So the complete name for this structure, for this structure that I just draw, will be cis dash 4 methyl 2 hexene. So, it's basically the same name, but you're having the word cis in front because you can look at the hydrogen. Hydrogen is on the same side. That's why it's a cis isomer. Simple, easy. So next, 
let's try to look at your trans isomer. So in your trans isomer, you do not need to change everything. Make sure you still have your C double bond C. All right. Make sure you still have your trigonal planar shape. And guys, we need to switch one of the hydrogen, CH3 hydrogen and the carbon group. You need to switch one of it and choose the one that is smaller. Okay, the big group over here, the big group over here, remain it. Just copy. You have your hydrogen, you have your CH. Just copy the big group. The big group is not the one that you want to change. Okay, we are not going to change the big group. Next, we only switch this. So when you switch this, you will have your hydrogen sitting at the bottom. You will have your CH3 sitting at the top. And then it will be your trans isomer because look at your hydrogen, guys. Your hydrogen right now is at the opposite direction by simply switching this. So which one are we going to switch? Choose the one that is a smaller group. Easier for you to switch. The big group, you just remain. So that is my trans isomer. Simple. So the name for this structure will be trans. Make sure you have the word trans dash for methyl to hexene and that is the name of my trans isomer just want to remind you if you are having a normal structure in a shape that you cannot see whether it's a trans or a cis then the name will be the normal name that we used to give for methyl to hexene to make sure that you can have the name as a cis isomer your drawing must be in a trigonal planar shape all right, can you see the trigonal planar shape? That is your trigonal planar shape, okay? Then your name must have the word cis and a dash. Can you see a cis and a dash? The same name, but you only add a cis and a dash. For the trans isomer, same thing. You must have your trigonal planar shape where your hydrogen is at opposite direction. And your name will be a trans for methyl 2 hexane. Can you see that? So, conclusion is the trans and the cis must have the arrangement in a trigonal planner so that you can see the position of your hydrogen is at the opposite or at the same direction. Then you can identify whether it's a cis or trans. If the question gives you like this, then you only give the normal naming simple easy all right and i think that's it for today's video so the iupac naming rules for the alkene is the same except you have something new that we call cis isomer and trans isomer so make sure you understand this very well and if you have any question drop in the comment below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can thank you for watching and i shall see you in the next video